it's Thursday and you know what that means. Yes, Lindsay's back with another episode of Queer Kid Stuff Season 2, destroying stereotypes and childhood alike. Now I know what you're thinking. How do I put up with this channel week after week? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. One part Jack Daniels, two parts Domestos. Toilet duck works too, but the aroma left behind may encourage your housemates to shit in your mouth while you sleep. So, charge your glasses and take your seats. The show is about to begin. Hey there, welcome to Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Lindsay, and today I'm talking to the grown-ups about the importance of LGBTQ plus representation in children's media. Okay, let's have a quick mulling over of LGBT representation in kids' media. There's little to none. Lovely! You may sit in front of the television unsupervised, Timmy, and let it parent you while your mum and dad get fucked on bath salts. We all are part of one big family. Gay means happy. Teddy, be free! Hey there, grown-ups. Okay, today we're talking about something near and dear to my heart. Um, cholesterol! LGBTQ plus representation in children's media. Saying it a second time doesn't make it all right, Lindsay. Unless you're going to address Dora the Explorer being a blatant lesbian. I mean, come on. A short-haired girl who's mates with a talking fish? It's an obvious metaphor, people. This ties directly into our mission here at Queer Kid Stuff, where we are imagining a kinder and more equal future through our videos. Speaking of being kind, what have you done with Teddy? I was really worried about him last week and he doesn't seem to be around for this episode. I know you deleted all the Save Teddy hashtags from your comment section, Lindsay. That must have taken ages, by the way. There were fucking loads of them. And, and, and don't do that, guys. I, I do ask you not to harass them, even if it is really... Really fucking funny. What have you done with him, Lindsay? Right now, there is a serious lack of LGBTQ plus representation in children's media. And you don't see Snow White buying seven 13 ounce sirloins on steak and blowjob day, so fucking what? Steven Universe and now Julie's Green Room on Netflix are the only shows for kids with legitimate LGBTQ plus representation that is specifically geared towards kids. Well, that's two shows I won't be allowing my future children to watch then. Here's a little something for you to think about, Lindsay. Just gonna put it out there and you can do what you want with it. Unless the kids watch these shows for the gay characters, the shit you're praising is subliminal and underhanded. Sexuality means sex, and unless you're in intention is to groom the next generation from the age of three, it has no place in their media. Stop being creepy. We've already talked about the queerness in Steven Universe, and in Julie's Green Room, one of the young puppet characters is gender non-conforming, which is so cool. And they had to make a ginger too, didn't they? Do you think that was an attempt to make the character as unlikable as possible? I'm telling you, as soon as those cameras stop filming, the cast and crew of that show stamp the fuck out of that puppet. The sound guy's giving it all, there are only two genders, as he sticks the boot in, and the director's British, and therefore just doesn't like gingers. Anyway, I don't give a fuck if they're conforming or whatever, they're either a boy or a girl. A child who grows up knowing that, in this increasing messed up world is going to have a distinct advantage over those who were made to watch queer kid stuff every week. Otherwise, there are a few one-offs like the moms on Good Luck Charlie on the Disney Channel and now LeFou in the live-action Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, it's a weird one, that, isn't it? I mean, it didn't add to the story at all, did it? It's almost like they wrote him in as gay just to appease the whiny fucks that were complaining about children watching films without asking their parents some fuck-awkward questions on the way home. But these aren't enough. It's never enough, is it? That's one of the biggest issues with gay representation in the media. When you get it, you always want more. You won't ever be happy, which is messed up, considering that's what gay means. And to be perfectly honest, a lot of it is queer baiting. That's when a show teases that characters might be LGBTQ+, and drop small hints about their sexuality, but never actually acknowledge or follow through on confirming their LGBTQ+, 
ness. Does it really matter? Unless a film is about someone's sexuality, what would it bring? In fact, if you look at Todd from Scrubs, his character had way more dimension when it was hinted at that he was gay. Once he was officially out, he became a lot less entertaining. So, what's more important to you, Lindsay? Entertainment or representation? Actually, that was a fucking stupid question, wasn't it? Let's put it this way. No one likes a character whose main feature is not a feature at all. They usually do it to bring in a more queer or liberal audience that might not have watched that TV show or movie otherwise. Well, exactly! Isn't that more so when they make a character gay for the sake of having a gay character? And I know that's not what you're saying. You're saying, let's have gay characters of substance. But if their sexuality is an attribute as per your request, how is that substance? I've been saying for a long time now, if I know your sexuality within 30 seconds of meeting you, I'm not gonna like you. And when kids are watching these stories, those small queer moments usually fly by them without a second glance. It's hard to really call this LGBTQ plus representation for kids when they might not even notice it. To be honest, those moments are more likely there for the parents having to watch the same fucking film again and again and again over the course of fucking years. Because children don't give a shit about sexuality and that's the way it should be. Why do you hate kids so much that you want them to take on your issues, Lindsay? If you think about all the press Beauty and the Beast got for its gay moment with LeFou, you need to remember that kids aren't reading those news stories or press releases in order to get the context that LeFou is intended to be queer. Yes, because they don't care about sexuality. And even if they did, it's not like they have a fucking say in whether they see the film anyway. If Timmy tells me he doesn't want to see Beauty and the Beast on the grounds of there being a gay character, I'd wonder how the hell he learned about homosexuality at such a young age. And also why he's a little bit homophobic. But fuck it, I can't flirt with all the hot mum if I don't have a child with me too. Get in the car, Timmy. We're going. The moment in the movie is so fleeting that most kids probably didn't notice unless a grown-up pointed it out to them. And even if they did notice, it wasn't a central plot point in the movie. And LeFou is a villain character. Oh, here we go. It's actually pretty common for Disney to use LGBTQ plus stereotypes in their villain characters. Like Ursula, who was actually modeled from a drag queen. Haha! <laughs> okay, I didn't know that! That doesn't make her a drag queen though, and it doesn't make her gay, just a bit rough looking. There's also Scar, Hades, and Jafar. Fuck off, Lindsay! None of those were gay! You're projecting like a motherfucker here! Their sexuality was never brought up, which must be why they were such popular films! Associating stereotypical LGBTQ plus characteristics with villains leaves kids with the idea that queerness itself is inherently evil. Well, these were Walt Disney films, mind. I mean, you gotta know your history on that one. Look, you've already complained that the gay moments are fleeting and fly right over the kids' heads, yet now you're saying the supposed gay villains who are so subtly gay it flew over my head are making the kids associate homosexuality with evil. Pick one, Lindsay. Either the kids recognise them as gay villains, or they recognise them as villains with no further effects. And don't think you're getting away with not mentioning Timon and Pumbaa raising a child together. I don't even like Disney films and even I knew that, Lindsay, you cherry-picking bastard. You can compare the few examples of actual positive LGBTQ plus representation in children's media with the hundreds and hundreds of movies and TV shows for kids that focus on romance between a boy and a girl. Yeah! Almost like it's the basic building block for the survival of a species, isn't it? You can see this in nearly every Disney movie. Children's media has a huge, huge bias towards heterosexual storylines. This leads to a lot of problems, because the larger purpose behind art and storytelling is for us as humans to see ourselves reflected back to us. Yep, yeah, art imitates life. I've not seen ISIS pop up in kids' media either, though. Well, not in the West, anyway. So, Lindsay, unless you're advocating for the presence of acts of terror in kids' media, you might want to admit there are certain things an infant should not be spoon-fed. And seeing your story and identity explored through art is incredibly validating. I wouldn't know, as one of the few times I'll see a floating head in the film is in the new Power Rangers movie. Lindsay, there is no such thing as a gay four-year-old. That's just a four-year-old. They might turn out to be, but until they find that out for themselves, they're just a four-year-old. And maybe a little camp. 
Kids who are or might become LGBTQ plus do not see themselves reflected in their stories right now. I just fuck it. Do you know what? Just wind it back to my previous point. Fuck it. Kids who aren't and might not become LGBTQ plus are less likely to empathize with LGBTQ plus people because those identities are unfamiliar to them. As it was for practically everyone growing up. And society is generally accepting of homosexuality. If you're referring to homophobes, no amount of gay characters in media is going to change them. This leads to bullying and increased rates of suicide and depression in LGBTQ plus youth. And that is unacceptable. Everyone gets fucking bullied. If it's not for being gay, it's for having a massive fucking nose and shit glasses. None of this is exclusive to homosexuals, Lindsay. And never mind the fact that you're implying there's no other factor in suicide amongst LGBT besides being gay. Couple that with your teachings of sexuality being the most important thing and at least one quarter of the world will be swinging from a noose right now. The LGBTQ plus community has made huge strides in representation in adult media, but right now it feels like we're taking a huge step back in quantity and quality when it comes to children's media. Well good! No one wants their kid to kill themselves, do they, Timmy? Timmy? That's a big reason why I started Queer Kid Stuff. I want to balance the scale and help build a base of knowledge for kids around LGBTQ plus topics because it simply isn't there right now. And yet no one is throwing homosexuals off of roofs. I think the system works. I believe that when the scales are balanced and there's an equal amount of truly diverse media for children, that we can help kids build a kinder and more equal world. You are assuming the kids will be on board with what you're saying though. Some might not be, you know, then you're dealing with gangs of seven year old homophobes. I would love to live in a world where I didn't have to come out to every new person I met or every new job I started or every new room I walked into. What the fuck? Stop coming out to everyone. It's not important. Why are you even mentioning that at a job interview? Uh, so Lindsay, I see you have experience working with Microsoft Excel. What format did you use in your old job? Um, well, I'm gay. I want to live in a world where being straight isn't the immediate assumption. Look at the fucking state of you! No one is assuming that! That's what Teddy and I are trying to do. We are imagining a kinder and more equal future. Where's the bear, Lindsay? Where's the bear? And I hope that someday that future can become our reality. We hope you can use our videos to help your little ones understand- No! Look, I appreciate you want to get in there early and form a new generation of children accepting of homosexuals and don't get me wrong, that is really weird. But exposing them to sexuality at such a young age is like ripping the band-aid off before the cut has had a chance to heal. It's too soon, Lindsay. Actually, in this case, it's more like sticking a fetus in assless chaps and saying, have at it, boy. Either way, it's not right and someone's gonna get an infection. Thanks for watching guys, please consider becoming a patron to keep this channel churning out the crap on a regular basis. It takes around 6 hours to make a video and without my patrons this simply wouldn't be happening. Don't forget to find me on Vidme and on Dailymotion in case we get shut down. Come say hi to me on Minds, on Facebook and on Twitter and remember, if gay means happy, why is the rate of suicide so high?